So you might have seen the Minecraft that's completely generated by AI. This is Oasis. This model is essentially creating video games, in this case Minecraft, in real time, on the fly. As AI takes over, make this your mantra. Let the robots do the work. Subscribe to stay on top of AI news. Think about it. No more pre-designed levels, no limits set by developers. The game doesn't even run on code. It's like stepping into a world of pure imagination. But it's not Willy Wonka, it's Minecraft, and it's powered by some serious AI tech. The model generates everything in real time. Things like buildings, lighting effects, even physics. It's all happening in real time. And Oasis isn't just about fancy graphics. This model shows a deep understanding of how this game works. Like how objects should interact. It's even down to tiny things like inventory management. It's almost like it has this learned intuition about how the game behaves. And that's where it gets really interesting. It's not just mimicking this game, it's actually learning how to create this game. And the way it's doing this is that it's built on a powerful combo of a spatial autoencoder and a latent diffusion backbone. So what does that mean? Let's break it down. Imagine you're making a map, a huge 3D world but you have to fit it onto a flat piece of paper. That's kind of like what the spatial autoencoder does. It takes all the complex info of the 3D environment and compresses it down into a more manageable format that the AI can then work with. It's like creating a blueprint of the world and the AI uses that to build from. Basically, it's knowledge compression, similar how you can take a raw image of a camera and save it in a smaller, more manageable format that still retains a lot of the textures and details. This is a somewhat similar idea to that. And next we have the Laden Diffusion Backbone. And this is where the real magic starts. Of course, you might have seen this in Stable Diffusion. You've seen a lot of technology similar to this with a lot of the AI video generation models. And you can think of it like restoring a old damaged photo, right? You start out with something blurry and unclear, and then slowly, piece by piece, you remove that noise until you have a clear, crisp picture. The AI is using that blueprint, that compressed information, and then uses that diffusion process to generate a clear, playable environment. By the way, most of the AI image generation and AI video generation at some level work like that through this idea of having these AI diffusion models. And of course, also a lot of this is possible due to transformers, the AI architecture that was initially invented by a number of Google researchers in 2017. The idea of the transformer, that's what's driving a lot of the AI innovation that we're sitting right now. It's responsible for this big wave. And transformers are crucial for both the speed and the scalability of this model. Basically, they allow Oasis, this Minecraft model, to process information and generate new frames incredibly fast. We're talking something like a new frame every 0.04 seconds. That's a lot faster than some of the text to video models we've seen, which take forever to generate just a few seconds of video. The speed is what gives you that real time interactive experience. It's like the difference between watching a movie and actually playing a game. You are in control and the world is responding to your actions. Now we've seen something similar out of Google when they created their game engine, right? You might've seen it playing that game of Doom, the game from 1993, I believe. That was a collaboration between Google Research and Tel Aviv University, and it ran largely on a lot of the same technology. And Game Engine can interactively simulate that classic game of Doom at over 20 frames per second on a single TPU. TPU is Google's own chip, the Tensor Processing Unit, similar to how a lot of the GPUs, the Graphic Processing Unit that's from NVIDIA, the TPU is Google's own. And by the way, something similar is happening here with this Oasis in Minecraft. While we mentioned some of the crucial pieces of the architecture to create this game, there's another important element here, and that's the hardware. Oasis is optimized to run on a new type of chip that's specifically designed for AI processing. It's called Sohu. So that means they've built a custom engine to power this incredible AI machine. But before we get too carried away with the hardware, let's uh, talk about the training process. How do you create and scale up this sort of model? How did the developers actually teach Oasis to build these incredible worlds? 
Well, it all starts with something called diffusion forcing. Remember how we talked about that AI slowly removing the noise to create a clear picture, like restoring a damaged photo? That's the basic idea. But instead of a photo, imagine it's learning to create an entire world, frame by frame. It starts with random noise, and through the process of diffusion forcing, it learns to transform that noise into something coherent and structured like trees, buildings, and even moving creatures. That's wild. So what did they actually feed this AI so it can be trained so they could learn from? Well, this is where things get kind of interesting. They've trained Oasis using a massive data set of, wait for it, you'll never guess, Minecraft videos. Well, I mean, obviously. But if you think about it, Minecraft makes sense. It's all about building, exploring, creating, digging. It's a perfect sandbox for an AI to learn these fundamentals of generating a vast, dynamic, interactive world. The sheer amount of open world gameplay footage that's available online and YouTube, etc. there's a lot of it to go around. So this AI model has a lot of data to learn from. The researchers used open source Minecraft videos collected by, interestingly, OpenAI. So there was a treasure trove of diverse environments, objects, and player interactions. So Oasis basically went to Minecraft school. But teaching an AI to generate a stable world, especially one that reacts in real time, comes with a lot of challenges. Even small inconsistencies could totally break the immersion. You don't want models randomly disappearing or the landscape suddenly shifting around. That's where temporal stability becomes a crucial factor. The team had to make sure that this generated world remained consistent over time, that actions had consequences, that changes happened smoothly and realistically. By the way, a lot of you that watched the Doom AI video that I made, there's a lot of similarities here. If I had to guess, the Oasis developers probably borrowed at least some of their tricks from Google DeepMind and what they've uh, been able to create with Doom. But back to the story. How do we smoothly and realistically develop the world that where your actions have consequences? Well, they used this clever technique called dynamic noising. They basically introduced small amounts of noise, right? Randomness, or you can think of it in terms of images or TV as static. They introduced that during the training process. So they're kind of intentionally throwing curveballs at the AI, forcing it to adapt and learn to maintain the stability, even when things aren't perfectly predictable. And this little trick, this little strategy, it worked. The results are impressive. AI generate worlds that feel remarkably consistent and believable, even with the player actively interacting and making changes. It's pretty amazing. If you think about it, even back in the Doom AI, there wasn't as much interaction. They were shooting, opening doors, etc. But nothing even remotely close to the complexity of the sandbox world that Minecraft is. Now, of course, if you've seen some of the comments on Twitter and various other social networks, not everybody is as excited about this. A lot of people are saying that this is the silliest most ridiculous thing they've ever seen. Because of course, as you can imagine, even though we've had this incredible progress, there's still a lot of limitations. No AI is perfect and Oasis is still under development. The developers themselves have pointed out areas they're still working on. You know, for example, there's a bit of fuzziness in the distance. The AI struggles to render the details that are far away. Generating a whole world on the fly in real time is a pretty heavy lift. There's, of course, also challenges with precise object control. The AI model is still learning the nuances of how different objects should behave. So sometimes things might not interact exactly how do you expect. And of course, there's the issue of long-term memory. Right now, Oasis is really good at generating the immediate environment, but remembering things that happen further back in the gameplay is still a challenge. The number of objects in your tooltip and your toolbar changes rapidly. How many items do you have there? Is it five or six? Nope, it's 10, actually 11, 12. And now it's something else. And so a lot of people are kind of focusing on those little errors and glitches, and they're not that little, to be honest. Certainly when you're playing the actual coded version of Minecraft, it behaves how you expect it to. This is a little bit more like a fuzzy dream that you're in. But the point is that the developers are staying on top of those limitations. So what's the next on the roadmap for Oasis? What can we expect to see in the future? 
Well, the teams focused on scaling up both the model itself and the data set. They believe that with more data and more computing power, they can overcome a lot of these limitations. So you can expect bigger and better Oasis models down the line. And this is, of course, true for all the other companies as well. OpenAI and Sora have stated that just more compute is all you need. You can simply scale up the results by throwing more horsepower, more hardware at it. And the developers of Oasis are also working on optimizing for the Sohu hardware, those custom chips that we talked about. This could lead to even faster generation speeds and maybe even bump us up to 4K resolution. Can you imagine 4K AI generated video games that you can play in real time? That would be kind of mind blowing. But beyond the technical advances, the big question here is how do we actually use this technology? What is it for? Now it's clear that Oasis has the potential to go way beyond just gaming, way beyond. What are the real world implications of being able to create whatever virtual worlds you want on demand? in real time and interact with them. You can imagine architects designing buildings in Oasis. They could make changes in real time and see how those changes affect the structure, the lighting, everything. That would be revolutionary for engineers, architects, doctors, researchers. Filmmakers, for example, could create virtual sets that adapt and react to the actors that would open up a whole new world of creative possibilities. You can shoot in any location, Anything you can envision can be generated in real time. You can have a million different takes to select the best possible one, etc. Education could benefit hugely too. Think about history students. They could actually walk through an ancient city, not just read about it in a textbook. They can interact with the characters, observe a simulation of a historic battle taking place. Or biology students could dissect a virtual frog, seeing all the organs and systems in 3D without harming any real animals. The potential for immersive learning is just huge. Same thing with immersive entertainment. And of course, it would be big for scientific research. Scientists could use Oasis or similar technologies to simulate complex environments. They could study all sorts of things from climate change to behavior of subatomic particles. It's like having a virtual lab where you can run experiments and explore scenarios that would be impossible in the real world. New technology like Oasis is almost a new kind of scientific instrument, one that lets us understand the world in ways we never could before. It's getting us much, much more closer to the idea of a simulation. If you've ever had a dream where you couldn't tell whether it was real or not, that was basically your brain generating a world in real time and showing it to you. We are beginning to design these artificial brains that are capable of replicating that interactively in real time with something that is beginning to remind us of actually, you know, high fidelity of actually doing the thing that we think it should do of acting in a realistic manner. Now, of course, we're very, very early. We're nowhere near the level of advancement that would allow us to simulate entire worlds on the fly with something like this. And of course, there's probably a lot of risks that come with something like this. Potentially some ethical considerations if we're creating entire worlds populated with people that may perceive themselves as being real one day. But if we approach this thoughtfully, technology like this, like Oasis and other similar models could truly unlock some incredible new possibilities for humanity, for science. So if you made it this far, I want to know what you think. When you see the gameplay, do you see it as some sort of a buggy, horrible, fuzzy version of Minecraft? Or are you understanding why this is important? Are you understanding why the engine that's powering this is much less like the code, the computer that powers Minecraft and much, much closer to something like our brain? And that brain is like a toddler that's just beginning to take its first steps. Let me know in the comments. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I will talk to you next time.